No, no, no. I will not fix your computer. But we will talk about Drupal. Stay tuned. We interrupt this program for an important bulletin. Welcome back. We have Scott Mattoon, Chief Architect of the U.S. Western Region. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Khalid. So before we talk, get into Drupal, um, tell us a little bit about um, you know, the type of folks that you, you, um, you work with. Well, I cover the 11 Western U.S. states, and I see a lot of large enterprise customers primarily, and also a lot of uh, Internet startups and what we're referring to now as the Web 2.0 set of companies. And, and before we, you know, we started taping, you had mentioned an interesting trend that I thought our audience might like to learn, learn more about. Yeah, well, of course it revolves around open source adoption. We're seeing sort of what I think of as the second wave of open source adoption within enterprises and large institutions. They're seeing that there's now sort of a higher value stack available to them with built on open source technology like Drupal. So, so in terms, in that sense, you know, it's not just startups who are using a lot of this open source software, but we're seeing a lot of enterprise uh, customers now adopting open source and seeing the value around yeah, it. Yeah, we're, I think, at the very kind of bottom of, of a pretty steep adoption curve right now. Excellent. So with that as a reference, uh, tell us a little bit more about Drupal. Okay, well, Drupal is a free and open source software content management system, CMS, and it was developed in 2001, and um, based on PHP, it's grown into a really thriving community with uh, thousands of developers. It's been extended with uh, Drupal's modular capability to have literally thousands of add-on modules to extend capabilities for things like e-commerce, um, Creative Commons licensing and attribution, for sure. example. So, so there were content management systems before, and a lot of commercial ones, especially in sure. the mid-90s, and, and, and there are some other uh, open source um, content management systems. So what makes Drupal special? Well, so the other ones that I'm familiar with are Joomla, uh, Plone, Cake, these are the open source ones, and of course there's the commercial ones too. Drupal's got a really nice architecture. It simpl simplifies the job for the developer, and um, it's really taken on sort of a viral nature. People are adopting it in nonprofits and activist organizations as well as enterprises, so you so, see it sort of spanning a lot of different needs. Great. So when did it, you know, so you said it started uh, in 2000, 2001. Right. When did it hit the limelight? Well, there was definitely a trigger um, event, and that was um, in Howard Dean's 2004 bid for the U.S. presidency. He was known for having an online campaign that was very successful, and that was really centered around something called Dean Space, which was built on Drupal. And that, the success of that campaign really triggered a huge wave of adoption in political activist organizations and nonprofits and um, cultural institutions. And basically, the, you know, folks took notice that, hey, hey, here's a solution that can take a lot of, uh, um, you know, a lot of traffic and, right. and manage it well. Right. It proved that it can scale to that sort of um, CNN level kind of sure. demand. Can you, can you frame how popular it is? Well, uh, for example, it's been downloaded, I think, about 600,000 times. Um, over half of that has been in just the most recent year. Um, it's literally deployed on thousands and thousands of sites. Um, chances are, if you're an active web developer, you've been to numerous Drupal-based sites. Um, in terms of PageRank. Right. So Google PageRank, Drupal.org itself, that's not all the other sites that are built on right. Drupal. Just Drupal.org is PageRank 9 by Google. That happens to be what Sun.com is, too, with its tens, and tens of thousands of pages. Wow. So it's pretty popular. Yeah, it's very popular. I think it's ranked like about uh, 2,800 in the overall ranking. Okay, so let's get to the next level. So in terms of, you know, wanting to develop, you know, you, someone can go out and get the, what are, are they downloading um, a set of libraries? Are they downloading a working infrastructure that you can construct, you know, and customize through PHP? Right, so as I said, it's based on PHP, so you need a, um, an AMP stack is typically the deployment um, infrastructure, right? So you need Apache, MySQL, or Postgres, um, and then PHP. And um, then from there, you just need the Drupal package. The current release is 5.2. Right. 6.0 is due out sometime this fall. 
go get that package, install it. It's a pretty straightforward installation process. And once you get it installed and, and Apache's connected to it, you can then go through the database installation from there. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay. And in terms of um, you know customizing it and extending it, is all is that all through uh, PHP? There's a really nice um, API exposed in, through PHP. So there's libraries. There's actually great documentation out there and a couple of good books too, to lead you through good coding standards, coding practices, how to um, leverage what they call hooks in Drupal to connect to the existing functionality or override core Drupal functionality as well. So the architecture is built so that you don't actually clobber anything in Drupal core, but instead override certain things that don't work for you or you need, you know, differing functionality. Okay. And in terms of databases, it runs on a variety of databases. Are there some good open source databases it works on? So the ones that it's, you know, bomb proof or, you know, rock solid on are Postgres and MySQL. Oh. Some people have experimented with others, but right. uh, those are the main ones it's deployed on. And those both are available on Solaris. Yep, that's right. right. So in terms of uh, doing PHP development, you know, so we're gonna, uh, our developers want to customize it and, and enhance uh, maybe their installation or maybe commit back to the project itself. Mm -hmm. um, are there some good tools? There are. Um, the one that I think is really interesting from a Sun perspective is our NetBeans uh, IDE, and there is a PHP plugin for NetBeans, so it makes it really convenient for a PHP developer to actually use that, you know, what's been traditionally associated with Java development for PHP. Work. Wow, so yeah, the NetBeans is doing Java development, JRuby and Ruby development, yeah. and, you know, JavaScript, and now they, it has functionality to do uh, PHP yeah. as well. Yeah, and it really simplifies the job then of deploying your code and, you know, iterating quickly on features and, and, and bug fixes. Okay, great. So you brought something uh, for show and tell. Yeah, and it's just um, an example of the, the stack that Drupal is typically deployed on. And um, we'll start at the top. So as I said, there's literally thousands of custom modules available for Drupal or extensions for, for Drupal that are called modules. I've put two examples here, the Creative Commons licensing and attribution module, which, mm -hmm. which will let you actually assign licenses to different levels of licenses, so the share alike license, for example, to different nodes or content within a Drupal site. So you get that um, sort of attribution there. Civi CRM is another really popular rich functionality that is a module for uh, Drupal that gives you um, what we think of as customer relationship management, but mm -hmm. what that community refers to as constituent relationship mm -hmm. management because, again, its origins were with activist organizations and, and nonprofits, right? So those are two examples of the literally thousands of modules that are out there. Then there's the Drupal core, again, we're at release 5.2. Um, and then if you're, you know, deploying in, in the Sun world, the AMP stack that we provide is optimized for both our Spark architecture and um, the X64 platforms, both Intel and AMD. So basically, I mean, Drupal will run extremely well on the Slayers platform, you know, with our AMP stack. Yeah, it's really optimized. You get some great performance out of that. Plus, it's got the the most commonly used PHP modules um, already um, compiled okay. for you. And then, of course, Solaris 10 with all its advantages around, for example, for the developer, it's really interesting that you can use Dtrace to find those inefficiencies or the hamster wheels in, you, in your code very quickly. Is it, are there Dtrace probes uh, in Drupal itself? or is Not it for in, Drupal, but for, for PHP. Okay. So there are actually some good PHP probes for um, Drupal right now. In fact, if you go to download our AMP stack, you'll find links to the Dtrace probes for, for PHP as well. Well, excellent. So basically, Drupal is um, a content management system and more. You know, in essence, it, it really like is. I mean, there's a there's sort of a split, an interesting debate within the Drupal community about well, is it a content management system or is it a framework for developing major applications? You know, you know, one last comment. Um, you know, I think it's pretty interesting that you are actually here talking about Drupal because you know you're out there in the in our field organization, you know, working with the sales folks and and dealing with lots of customers in the enterprise space. Yet you're so passionate about. Uh, you know, this open source project and, and, you know, it's just, you know, we get a lot of technologists and, and, and other folks here, but, you know, you, you're someone who's actually dealing with, you know, working with customers to do, you know, get their solutions up and running and using open source software. Yeah, well, cool. Thanks for noticing that. Well, Maybe. hey, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks. We'll be right back with another cool gadget.